Today I wanted to talk about the unexpectedly interesting and surprisingly beautiful subject of giraffe scrotums. You see, in the African... what? Is there something on my... Is there something going... what? Okay, before you start asking, no, I am not on meth. Although, if you have some, I've been really crazy busy lately, so call this number. I look like crap. There's really no other way to describe it right now. No, I did not fall off my Vespa and come to a stop on my face. This is the result of a treatment that I'm going through right now for some precancerous spots on my forehead. I started to not do this video at all because I really look horrible. In fact, just today I went out and I bought this to wear when I'm out in public so that nobody has to see it. But I thought, no, nope, I'm gonna give you the naked truth. I'm gonna show you exactly what's going on here because you know what? I'm not always beautiful. You're just gonna have to understand that. And I also decided that there's probably a bigger point that I could be making here about uh, sunscreen and skin cancer. So I'm just gonna do it. Here we go. By the way, this is the skin cancer treatment stuff that I've got going on. This right here is just a staph infection that decided to pop up on my nose because um, why not? So Rudolph came early this year. It's a really disturbing sex joke. Basically the story is I go to the dermatologist at least once a year because I'm very pale and I grew up in Texas, so you know, I'm gonna die. So when I went this last spring, she you know found a few spots on my forehead, which is not unusual, but then she said something to me that is easily the craziest thing any doctor's ever said to me. And I'm gonna tell you what she said verbatim, okay? This is exactly what she said. Okay, I've got this cream that will take care of those spots, but before I give it to you, I need to ask, um, are you gonna be around any people for a few weeks? Uh, yeah, why? Well, this cream will get rid of those spots, um, but it will kind of eat your face. You might scare some small children. Um, have you seen Phantom of the Opera? It's like that. When your dermatologist tells you that she's gonna do something, but you should probably avoid being seen by people for a while, that's not something you wanna hear. So I actually did test this stuff out back in the spring on a spot over here, and um, it did. It just kind of eats away your skin so that it can grow back healthy, but it gets, it looks really gnarly for a while, and I was kind of concerned. I was like, is this what it's supposed to look like? Because it looked like somebody put out a cigar on my forehead. So I'm at work, and I go to my computer at my desk, and I do a Google image search for this cream because I wanted to make sure that what was happening here was what everybody else has happened. And uh, this is how I found out that this cream is also used for genital warts. So yeah, buttholes at work on my screen, buttholes. And I'm not talking about the cute little pink buttholes that I'm always looking at online, no. I'm talking about like big gnarly cauliflower poop shoots at work. Still got my job. But the last one healed up pretty well. You can't even tell that it's there. It didn't leave a scar. So I have high hopes for this one, which is good because skin cancer scars, you know, they say that scars are like tattoos, but with better stories. Skin cancer scars though, I think that might be the exception to the rule. Skin cancer scar stories, pretty anticlimactic. They all end pretty much the same way. Hey, what's this spot on your face right here? What, what happened to you? Oh, okay, so when I was a, when I was a kid, my cousin and I, we used to go uh, play tag all the time. So I'd come over to his house and we'd be running around for hours outside and uh, it got to where I started, you know, like we were really competitive about it. And so I would climb up in this tree to get away from him and the tree had these like little thorny like branches and everything. And uh, yeah, I wasn't wearing sunscreen. What happened to this place on your arm? Oh yeah, okay, so when I was in high school, I played tennis. I went to this tennis camp one summer, right? And there was a girl there named Joanna. I was in love with Joanna. Joanna was just gorgeous. And so I was you know, serving one day and Joanna's like behind me. She's like, hey, why don't you come with me? And I'm like, okay. So we go into the woods, you know, behind the tennis course and she starts making out with me and it's getting hot and heavy. And at one point she like takes her shirt off and she's like, I like it rough. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> I wasn't wearing sunscreen. What happened to this place on your leg, that gnarly spot behind your knee? What, what was that? Oh, dude, okay, so when I was in college, uh, we went to Cabo, right, and we got so wasted. We literally, like, woke up the next morning in a car in the middle of the desert. We had no idea how we got there. And then, so, you know, we get back on the road. The car runs out of gas. We're trying to hitch a ride, and this van pulls up. 
and these cartel guys get out, right? And we're like, oh, dude, what do we say? And they're like, oh, PJ Gringo. And we're like, oh, no. <laughs> and then he shot me in the leg because Mexican cartels are worse than skin cancer. But that's what it's like being pale. It sucks. You know what the worst thing about being pale is, is that like, I could work out like a fiend. I could get a personal trainer and a nutritionist. I could be in the best shape of my life. I could look like David Beckham, right? But still, if I go to a beach and take my shirt off, people will still be like, whoa, dude, put that away. Nobody wants to see that. Dude, I go to a beach, people start gathering around me to try to tan off of me. I go to film sets and they use me to bounce light onto the actors. I'm the only person I know that actually gets a moon burn. I'm pale, people. I actually tried one of those spray-on tans one time just to see what that would look like, but it didn't work. I just looked dirty. And I told that to a friend of mine and she was like, well, in order for it to really look good, you kind of have to have a base tan to start with. Fat lot of good that does me. That's actually a very interesting business proposition. It's like, here's this thing that's impossible for you to do, so we've created a solution for it, but it only works if you first do that thing that's impossible for you to do. That's like going up to an Iraq war vet that's lost his leg and being like, okay, we know that you lost your leg in a landmine and we've made a prosthetic leg that'll make it like nothing ever happened, but it'll only work if you first grow back your leg. And yes, I just compared being pale. What the hell was that? And yes, I just compared being pale to being an Iraq war vet. The pain's pretty much the same. I'm sure any Iraq war vet would agree. See, I too have PTSD. I have pale traumatic stress disorder, so you need to respect that. Of course, to get serious for a second, the big point here is wear sunscreen. Every time you go out, put on moisturizer in the morning that has SPF 15 sunscreen in it. Um, don't neglect that because seriously, I'm too young to be having to deal with this kind of stuff and I'm already dealing with it and um, you shouldn't have to. And if you're pale, just be pale, all right? The whole tall, dark, and handsome thing, screw it. Nobody really cares about that. Just be who you are. Don't try to, you know, force your body to do something that it's not gonna do because it will rebel in bad ways. Pale life. That's the palest thing I've ever done. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you liked it at all, please click the thumbs up button. It doesn't just make me feel good. It also gets YouTube to show my stuff to other people and it gives me more opportunities. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet because I'm gonna be more serious about this. I'm gonna be coming to you with more stuff soon. You can find me at all the social media places below. I like to post interesting stuff. Let's have a conversation. And I've got a movie that I'm working on. It should be over here. I shouldn't even do this. I don't know which direction it is. Serendipity Moon is a film that I'm working on right now, a feature film that we'll hopefully finish shooting in the next few months. And I want to get you on board for that because it's going to be a real fun time. And I got some stuff that it's coming on down the pike and I really want to be able to talk about it, but I can't because it's not 100% official yet. But uh, that was the reason why I'm doing this stuff right now because once it gets started, I won't be able to do this because people will be looking at my face and I can't say any more than that. But it's going to be really exciting and interesting. Stay tuned. I'll see you next week. Thanks.